Hey guys, it's Daniel with Hard Lens Media. We got another perspective coming at you today from the state of Wyoming. Well, what are they talking about? Well, we talk a lot about Democrats on the show. Now we want to focus a little bit on Republicans. In this case, it's this kind of like weaselly, like, I didn't like this bill. I didn't vote for this bill. This bill that, as we know on the main show, is a bit of a travesty in many different regards. But here you have someone uh, complaining that they didn't get enough of a bill that they didn't even think should be passed. Let's take a look. You say blue states and big cities want to show the front page of the Casper Star Tribune. It shows a billion dollars going to your state of Wyoming. Yes, absolutely. And there's $350 billion going to states that uh, even the 22 governors, including our own governor, said that the formula they used to send this out was biased. Oh, it's biased. You mean the bill that you weren't even participating in, the bill that all of GOP basically said, we don't want to participate in, you didn't get to participate in, in the writing of this, although we had we had a, we had a little bit more than we know uh, we would have liked, and you're still complaining about something happening, and you're like, oh no, all the blue states, and we know where that goes when people use those arguments. It's a lazy argument. The reality is, we on the left have been principled about this. This should have not passed the way it did. It missed minimum wage. It missed a huge amount of things. It wasn't $2,000. People lost a lot. And so even when he's talking about the $1 billion, which is a lot of money for a, a state of, what, half a million people, a little less than that, it's not a small amount, plus the checks that are coming in, I get annoyed. I get annoyed when I see this sort of complaining. You didn't participate in the process. You didn't try and do anything. Your entire group just said no. Meanwhile, no one even covers progressives on the left with, they've already moved past Medicare for all. They've already moved past minimum wage. Yet this guy, this guy gets on camera because he's complaining about something that he didn't even participate in. Uh, and unfair focused at California, New York, Illinois. It punished this, the states that opened earlier and it rewarded the states that uh, stayed closed the longest. This is a really weird argument. He's either making the point that they single-handedly only attacked states early on, or maybe another way to put it, they just didn't do as well because they were far more open, which meant there were far more cases that were circulating in. And they had rest it just seems like a weak thing to say. It just seems like a thing that I would say if I was a bought out person who just was trying to say I'd like more money on a bill that's already passed. There's no room for negotiation anymore. It just annoys me that like, you know, on the left, we're trying to make things happen. They do nothing. They try and stop a bill. And yet they, again, they complain nonetheless that they didn't make as much money as they thought they would have in a process that they weren't even a part of. This coronavirus relief bill was not supposed to be about $1,400 checks to illegal immigrants or $1,400 checks to felons who are behind bars. Well, there's all the name drop and you gotta get all your fear mongering out of the way. You gotta throw all oh, there's illegal, by the way, how many illegal immigrants are in Wyoming? I'm asking legitimately because I don't know the answer. I really don't. I don't think there's that many. I really don't. This guy just is literally just like, I'm on TV. I got to say the talking points. I got to say the talking points. So I got to talk about people in jail. And I got to talk about people who cross the border. That's his job. That's what he's going to keep doing. Let's keep watching. Wasn't supposed to be about block grants to sanctuary cities or money to schools that continue to stay closed. Look, that, that's just the tip of the iceberg of the problems with this bill. The, I think that's a bingo. The bill is going to come due for this. And ultimately, as you just heard Nancy Pelosi say today to you, taxes are going to be next on the Democrats' agenda. So, if it, so does that mean that there's not going to be any Republican support for an infrastructure proposal or future initiatives from the Biden administration? If you can't get behind this, which is not paid for, any chance of seeing bipartisanship on infrastructure? What do you think this guy's going to say? Do you think he's going to go, no, we would never be bipartisan while having a track record of never being bipartisan? Or is he going to say, oh, yes, bipartisan, please, and then not mean anything by it? It's annoying. Either the Republicans dig in and never move under any circumstances or the Democrats just cave almost immediately under most circumstances. 
I'd really like to see bipartisanship on infrastructure because I chaired the committee in the last Congress that passed the highway bill. We also did the the, the water bill, the, the all of the issues of water as well as highway infrastructure. It was bipartisan. Uh, Bernie Sanders vote, voted for it and so did I. We got it to the House and what did the House do? They replaced our highway bill with the Green New Deal. Ah, the Green New Deal. The bill that mysteriously, if you ask every Republican, every Democratic lawmaker wants. But if you ask every Democratic lawmaker, something that just can't be passed because we don't have the capital or it's too expensive or won't work or it'll steal jobs. It'll take. It's a meme at this point rather than a bill where both sides say ridiculous things about it. Either the Democrats don't leave really or want to get it passed. I'll just we'll just cut right off after I say. Um, before I hit say the Democrats part, I think that's a good ending anyway. So they ignored what we had done in a bipartisan way. If they would take the model that we came up with in the committee in the Senate for highway and transportation, I think that's a very good start. I talked with the Secretary of Transportation, Pete Buttigieg, about it. Uh, and I think that is the model in which we should move forward on transportation and infrastructure. So his basic idea is just do what Republicans did before and call it compromise, even though we know Republicans get everything they want and re Democrats give everything up, except they, of course, work together on tax cuts. So when Nancy Pelosi says, to his earlier point, that she's going to be raising taxes on the wealthy, I'm going to hold my breath. Anyway, guys, it's Perspective with Daniel. See you guys next time.